Hey, Captain Ross Robertson with Big Water Fishing. You know, you hopefully have seen our videos, shenanigans, podcasts, whatever it may be. Well, here's what we're doing now, if you haven't seen. A project boat. Why would I buy a 20 year old boat? I have no idea. But we really wanted to have a little tiller boat. They're kind of a cult like following. They didn't make them that long. The Ranger 618. We took this just absolutely destroyed, tore up, hit, whatever you want to call it, smashed up boat. And we rebuilt this thing from top to bottom. On part 12 of the project boat, we're dealing with the trailer. You know, and kind of like what we figured out with the gel coat. Uh, part if you watch that is that you have to know when to call in the professionals and when you can do things yourself And one thing that I just knew was going to be lead in to be bigger and problems perhaps was the trailer and specifically the hubs because The guy that I bought it from had supposedly had it serviced the hubs and they were leaking already after we made that big drive back with the boat so knew that we had to do something i didn't want i wanted some peace of mind with that so we decided to swap those hubs out with a newer style they're going to be much lower maintenance and it's also the same ones that i have on my 622 so then i'm probably going to keep an extra one so i always have backup so as we dug into that and got that thing swapped out of course there was definitely more problems than what we originally had thought So right now we're taking some penetrating oil, spraying it on the splines of the axle here. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna smack it right in between right there. And it'll open this up a little bit to where we can eventually pull this off of the splines. We, uh, we actually took Ross's hub off of his trailer. It was really tough getting it off. But basically, if, you, if anybody has one of the old systems, if they look in here, you can see that there's oil in here. This particular uh, system did not hold up as well as the new ones do. This was actually a straight oil. The new ones are a high point grease that when they get warm, the grease turns into a real heavy oil. The problem with these is Ross actually had this service, made one trip over to here, and that was a long trip was where he picked up this boat. Um, but they were both leaking on both sides. Also, when these things go in the water, if it was leaking already, when this thing would have gone into the water, the bearings would have been warm. You back it into cooler water, it would wick that water right into the hub and that oil would become cr real creamy. Now they said that it didn't hurt it much, but I didn't really like the idea of moisture sitting on bearings. So we're gonna replace this whole system out with one of the new vault hubs. It's a little better system to say the least lower maintenance and, and it makes it a little easier on Ross that he doesn't have to sit, constantly be checking his oil levels or trying to repack his wheel bearings. So right now we're taking this wire wheel and we're just trying to clean out the splines a little bit, get all that old rust on there so the new one stays on and slides right on pretty nice. Right now we're just trying to clean up some of these splines, clean up the grooves, just get all the rust out of there, realign. There's a little one that's bent over here a little bit from trying to get the old one off, so we're going to try and straighten it back up and take it out so we can get the new uh, hub assembly back on there. So we got our new hub here and we're going to go ahead and after we got all these splines cleaned up and cleaned out, we're going to slide this back on there. And you gotta pay attention to the torsion when you put it on. You gotta look at the other side and remember and look at how you pulled it off and just make sure you're putting it back on the same way. And then you can just kind of wiggle it back on there. So we're going back to put these uh, bolts on that hold the hub assembly to the axle. And for, for pulling them off, this tool is great, but you really don't want to use it when you want to put them back on. You want to grab your old torque wrench and then get them torqued down. The proper torque for these is 150 foot pounds. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put this bolt back in and tighten it back down to the proper torque. So we got our torque wrench set to 150 pounds. Now we're just going to torque it down till you get the click. There you go. So on his old brake line, you can see this little fitting here going into the actual brake assembly had snapped off of his old hose. So we're gonna go ahead and replace his hose and pull all the old fittings out and move them over to the new brakes and get it strapped on there. 
You know, as we dug in there, Tommy over at Vic Sports Center was like, hey, we've got a little bit of an issue here with the, with the brake lines. We're going to have to replace those as well. And so, again, this is one of those parts where it's like, hey, this is probably beyond my scope and I want to know if there's something else that needs to be done and just availability too with having parts. Like I don't have that stuff readily available knowing the size. And when you have a professional uh, shop like Vix, it just makes life a whole lot easier and you know, peace of mind because you don't want the brakes going out on your trailer. That's a bad deal. We're just taking his uh, new fittings. This is the bleeder valve for his brakes. And then this is where the brake line will hook up. We're taking them and switching them over to the new brake system. So his old brake lines, they got these little clamps here that hold them up to the axle and they're riveted on. Right now I'm just taking the drill and drilling out all these rivets so we can replace his brake line. So I unthreaded his old brake line that goes across to the other side and now we're going to thread in the new one right here. Get that started. Okay, I can do that. So when you're tightening these brake lines, it's very important to not over tighten them because they're just made of like brass and they'll, um, if you over tighten them, you can give them like a, a stress fracture and it'll crack and then you'll have a leak. So now we're going to secure his brake line. We're going to go all the way across the axle and do this, but just to show you, take a rivet, go through the clamp. There's already holes in the axle from his old brake line where it was riveted on. Got a rivet gun. So we were going to breed his brakes and uh, right. we discovered a big tear in one of the brake lines right up here on the tongue. So what we're going to do now is pull out the actuator. Uh, here, right here is the brake solenoid where we got to pull the brake lines off of there and pull out the actuator because there's a, a nut over here where the brake line attaches. One attaches here and one goes here. You can't get to this one without pulling this out. So we're gonna pull this out, replace those, and then put it back in and hopefully everything works. You know, as this whole process was going on, my buddy B-Team Bob, as we like to call him, Captain Bob, he said, hey, if you can re-bolt something on, we should do it. And what he meant by that was, if there's parts on there that you can just simply unbolt and bolt back on and they don't look like they're in great shape, you should definitely do it. And so we kind of made that decision with the, uh, the front winch, which was obviously beat up, um, the safety change, a bunch of different things, um, the rear roller. So all these little things that you know are gonna be a problem, if you can, you know, those you can do yourself, unlike the brakes and the hubs that are a little more involved. And switching these out is gonna have a lot be better safety as well as uh, peace of mind as well. You know, when you're doing any of these old rebuilds, you've got old parts, the trailer's usually the thing that takes as much wear and tear as anything. And you can see this winch thing, he's been broke off, I don't know how many times, the thing on there. So I just thought I'd just replace it because it's kind of jacked up. And I went with basically the same type setup, but a little bit heavier, because anybody that's ever cranked one of these up knows there's probably not quite enough juice. The only thing that really took any time was, basically I put a new strap on. So this is a strap that I've had around as a backup for my other, my big 622, because it has the safety chain built right into it. It's really kind of convenient and a lot easier. It almost forces you to use it. So you just click this small one right onto the frame, and then we hook this up here. So. A lot easier to do. Kind of a simple fix, but something to think about because you have to crank this thing up. You'll wish you had a good one. So originally when we started doing this, we had a big black dumbbell um, roller. The one that was on there was rotted out and coming apart. And I have actually a backup one from my 622 that I just keep on hand. Because if those break, it's a really bad deal. But then I found where I needed to mount my transducer for optimal high speed running, which I just know from past rangers, that was actually gonna hit. And so I found this neat one that was self-centering, but the most important part was just lower or a smaller compactness, and it's not gonna affect the bunks or the transducer. So again, something as simple as you know knocking off the end caps there, which were definitely rusted on, and I just decided to put a whole new um, pin system on. It's very inexpensive. All these things that are rusted up, just get rid of them and put a new one on. Uh, this was a pretty quick project, but it really added a lot of value here because I could put my transducer where I wanted to and not where I had to. You know, we looked down there and the safety chains were quite literally rotted away. And this, fortunately, is a very inexpensive and simple fix. Literally a couple bolts on and off. There's somewhat universal sizing on these. I would tell you probably to get the longer ones because how they coil up pretty nice, it just makes it a lot easier depending on the vehicle. And you want a little bit longer ones is kind of my experience.
you know, a lot of the stuff with the trailer, like I said, is easy to bolt on and less than 50 bucks. And that's the same thing with this step here. Just found this online, just kind of a miscellaneous manufacturer. My Ranger 622, I've got a really nice Ranger steps that go into that and it's really handy whether it's in the garage or at the boat launch from keeping to get your feet wet or just being able to get in and out of the boat easy. So something as simple as this one step is gonna allow me to get on the tongue, hook up the boat, mess with the trolling motor or climb in it just like this. Something I definitely would consider if I were you. So that was an awful lot of work that we kind of summed up in you know less than 15 minutes there. Trust me, that was a lot more than 15 minutes to do all that work and many people over from Vic Sports Center kind of helping out with that and really making it happen. I can't say that this is the last you're gonna see of the trailer because honestly, there's other things that we don't know and some things I'm thinking about doing, but I just wanna get out there and drive it. I wanna get out there and fish it. And that's one thing that I would tell you guys too if you're doing a, uh, a project like this is at some point you wanna get out there and use it and see is there a bigger problem or how you like it or how it may kind of work out before you put a bunch of time and money into things that you may need to or not need to fix. And so while this uh, part on trailers is now over, it might not be over. <laughs>